Welcome. This is part one of dosing and renal impairment. I'm going to just go right ahead so we can keep moving here. The objectives are to remind you of, remember how we talked last semester about um, net mechanisms of renal clearance, whether something's predominantly secreted or predominantly reabsorbed by the kidneys when a drug is cleared by the kidneys. I'm going to remind you of that. We're also going to um, predict the outcome of a drug or disease interaction if we acidify the urine, alkalinize the urine. You remember all that as well, I'm sure, but we need to probably be reminded. Then we're going to talk about uh, dosing adjustment. Uh, make sure you understand dosing adjustment um, when a patient is uh, has renal impairment. So that's really our major goal, and we've already done a lot of that. So I'm going to try to have a pen here. And I think I will make it Magneta. Sounds nice. Okay. So we're going to move quickly on here. So we already know that um, drugs affect pharmacokinetics, right? Um, oh, I'm going to have to get used to the pen. <laughs> anyway, um, but do they affect pharmacodynamics? Remember, pharmacodynamics is the uh, relationship between concentration and effect. At what concentration do we get what effect? Do, does renal impairment change this? Well, we don't really know too much. We know that there may be more sensitivity. In other words, you may have a lower C50. C50 is the concentration where you get half the maximal effect. So it, you may have a little more sensitivity, like so the concentration of 10 before renal impairment may cause, let's say it's an antihypertensive, may cause the blood pressure to go down five points, and then renal failure, maybe it'll cause it to go down seven points. So there may be also, with that, an increased risk of toxicity. So an example of this is that morph morphine in a renally impaired patient will have more neurologic depression. We're not sure why. Could it be because the blood-brain barrier is changed in renal impairment? We don't really know. We do know that, again, nifedipine acts a little, has a little stronger effect on blood pressure um, in renal impairment patients than it does on uh, normal patients, and it's not just a higher concentration. It's at the same concentration, so interesting. Stay tuned for that. We just don't know that much. Now, pharmacokinetics. What happens with pharmacokinetics? Well, you know, obviously, there's going to be a decrease in clearance if for renally impaired drugs or for renally cleared drugs when patients' renal um, clearance, go, renal uh, function goes down. But what about bioavailability? Is there a change in FA? Remember, bioavailability is FA, FG, and FFP. So let's talk about each of those. FA, is there going to be a change in FA? Well, patients with renal impairment have a lot more nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea than patients without. So we could have a decrease in fraction absorbed because of increased transit time in the GI tract. Um, we also know that in nephrotic syndrome, there's some edema in the GI tract which could alter fraction absorbed or fraction uh, that escapes gut metabolism. In uremia, there's a nephropathy that decreases GI motility and gastric emptying time. So this could change our fraction absorbed. There's also more ammonia in the GI fluid, which causes an increase in gastric pH. So an increase in gastric pH is going to change your Henderson-Hasselbalch, right? And we do know that in uremic patients that need iron commonly, there's less absorbed because of this gas, this uh, alkaline pH in the urine or in the uh, GI tract due to the ammonia. Also, you will find out if you haven't already that patients with chronic renal failure often have to take calcium and it's to treat hyperphosphatemia and this will often also alkalinize the um, GI tract, changing the pH. Um, is there a change in fraction uh, that escapes the gut metabolism? Remember, this is the uh, P-glycoprotein and the enzymes that are in the gut wall. 
We do know that there's a decrease in p glycoprotein activity. Remember, p glycoprotein, if this is the, the gut lumen, the drug gets through into the wall. Remember, p glycoprotein is waiting here to spit it back out again. So if there's less p glycoprotein around, then you're going to have an increase in the FG, aren't you? Um, there's also a decrease in first pass effect of some drugs. Propranolol is an example. None of these are hugely consistent, unfortunately. But we do know that there are increases in bioavailability of cloxacillin, propoxyphene, dihydrocodine, and this is a huge one, enconide and uh, zidovudine. Those are some examples. Do I expect you to memorize those? No. But you can see that there are some drugs that have an increase in bioavailability and renal impairment. What about changes in protein binding and volume? Well, it, remember, well, I don't know if you've learned this yet, but in chronic renal impairment, you're going to have a decrease in the amount of albumin around. So less albumin around to begin with. There's also a decrease in affinity for that, um, those albumin binding sites. So what you see is an increase in fraction unbound um, for these drugs that are bound to albumin in renal impairment, which can cause an increase in volume of distribution. These drugs all exhibit an increase in volume of distribution um, when in renal impairment. Digoxin is an example of the other extreme. There's a 50% decrease in the volume of distribution with digoxin and renal impairment. But these drugs all increase because they're bound to albumin. Clearance. Obviously, if it's a renally cleared drug, you're going to have a decrease in renal impairment. But what about hepatic clearance? We have to think about, remember, as drugs are cleared by the liver, they're being changed into a metabolite, right? They don't just go away. They're being changed into a metabolite. Often these metabolites are dependent upon renal clearance. And so if there's a decrease in renal uh, function, they may not be eliminated. So the uh, metabolites of aparidine, morphine, procainamide are all... Uh, cleared renally and therefore if they have activity or toxicity you're going to have a problem. There are also hepatic enzymes found in renal tissue. They're not really hepatic enzymes then but P450 enzymes found in renal tissue. Um, and again as if, if those enzymes are destroyed because of renal impairment you're going to see a decrease in the clearance of those drugs too. An example of that is a cyclovir. We don't spend too much time on it because it's fairly uncommon. That's it. Thanks. I'll see you at part two. Bye-bye.